say dozer. It just adds on twice as many options. So when you switch over to dozer mode, you have all the options you have with CTL plus all the dozer options. So we just had our clinic this week. Um, first chance for customers to see the Minotaur vehicle and kind of see what we've been working on. So it's kind of a uh, moment of truth to uh, see what, uh, what everybody has to think about it. Um, it's one thing for you to drive the machine and you kind of form your own opinion, but you kind of know too much going into it. So it's really good to be able to have some outside um, people come in that are fresh, that haven't seen it, that haven't been in all the meetings and haven't gone to all the reviews and know what something is supposed to do. They come in with their expectations and their understanding and plus they have a practical background of what it is that they expect the machine to do, what their um, application is, what how they use equipment. So it's good to have people come in and kind of give you feedback as the, the design team to be able to know what, what we're doing right, what things that they see that we should improve, or what changes in direction we need to make. Uh, I knew a little bit about it. I, have, uh, I had seen it on um, their release, when they released it at Con Expo and stuff like that. A um, couple pictures, is, but other than that, that's about all I knew about it. They invite you out and, and they, they take your opinion and, and uh, and use it to change a machine or build a machine. I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. It's, uh, it's got great power. I mean, like uh, we were doing kind of a basement digging application where you're pushing out of the hole and stuff like that. And it, it definitely has plenty of power for that. And, um, then, you know, I took the dozer off, put the bucket on it, and the bucket's it's rolling over the bucket. It's wanting to fill the, if the door, didn't have a door on it, the cab would be full, put it that way. So it's, it, it definitely has the power to do that, and that's the biggest thing. As far as the controls, yeah, it feels like a dozer, being able to lock that in and run the other joystick, yeah, it feels like a dozer. It's a little different because you know you're kind of sitting a little lower. In the, in the cab of the Minotaur as opposed to kind of being up and back like a real dozer cab, but the controls, yeah, feels like a dozer. The power, the stability of it, the way it turned, the way it lifted up, it's all in settings. Once you figure out your settings, get everything set the way that you want for what you're doing, it's spot on. I mean, it had perfect lifting ability. The forklift is able to shift, turn, everything else on it. Fine grading, uh, once you got your settings in there right, you could blow right through it. As far as loading on the trailer, that backup camera is spot on. To a freaking T, I never looked out the windows or nothing, backing it up on there. It's set up perfect where you can just look right up at it, it's lined up it right in the center and you just go. I love that backup camera for loading and unloading, that was, that was key, that was perfect. Uh, you said you'd probably buy one on steel and one on rubber. There's a possibility, depending on you know what it would come down to, as far as how it operates and everything else on the material that we're using. So we do get a chance to take it on rock and side slopes and everything else. You know, we have to see exactly how the rubber compares to, because the steel does do better on the digging power. You know, moving uh, dirt, everything else. The rubber is better on your fine grade. I think with the steel tracks on there with the dozer pads, I think if you're trying to cut a deeper cut, a longer push, I'd say the steel tracks are better. Now as opposed to the rubber tracks, I think that's more of a fine grading machine. You know, if you're just spreading sod or piles of dirt or rock out. I tell you, sure, this machine would probably save us. Why well, would buy one machine instead of two? You know, if you eliminate our skid steer, we eliminate our cab. We use our we use our 650 John Deere's for backpacking, cleaning up behind our equipment and everything like you know our messes. This would eliminate two. You know, we'd have one piece of equipment versus the two, and then we could actually use this in our yard for hauling material, unloading trucks, come in. You know, my size contractors that you know you're getting two machines for one and that's what everybody's looking for is you know it's not it's not it is about the the dollar value the dollar of the machine what the initial cost is but you, if you can get two machines out of it it's 
it's that's the way it's going. I mean, anything to make our jobs easier and uh, you know, and, and to get them done faster. Um, when it first kind of came out after Con Expo, I kind of was inter pretty interested in it. Thought it'd be, you know, something a lot of customers would be able to use. You know, because we we use our CTL probably most out of every machine we have. It's moving about every day and being able to have that dozer blade on the front of there on smaller jobs, being able to, you know, build smaller pads or spread out smaller areas with topsoil or rock and th that type of stuff is easier than bringing in the big dozer and, and uh, taking a little more time trying to maneuver it around. For some of the concepts that we're going to be doing and everything else, this would be something that would benefit us. It would cut down, instead of having two different machines there, you'd only have one. Instead of having two people there running the machine, you'd only have the one. You'd be saving on time, uh, labor, you know, fuel, everything else, instead of hauling two machines out. You're only taking one out. You know, you could have you and a laborer out there doing a job that could take three to four people with just this one machine. And it's, it's a wonderful concept for what some of the things that's coming up that we could use it for. I mean, it, this thing could follow us doing roads, doing, you know, whenever we're smoothing out for house sites, anything. I mean, this application could be used in quite a few different spots of ours. All of it's impressed me. I mean, you know, the ability to be able to talk with some of the people here, the higher ups, the engineers and stuff like that, and voice your opinion to it, you know, that's, that's something that really helps out a lot on your end and our end. Overall, this has been a great experience. I love running this piece of equipment. I can't wait till we can actually get one and uh, put it to work. I mean, this will, this will benefit us greatly. Nothing really caught us off guard uh, with the customers today. We did a good thorough background on actually driving these machines. We have we had four expert operators, gave us initial feedback, we made some changes, and a couple weeks ago we retested those uh, changes with those expert operators, and they gave us the feedback very similar to what the customers did. Which our expert operators and our customers having the same type of feedback means we're going in the right direction and we're going to produce a product that the customers want at the end of the day. Definitely there are other things we've learned. This is kind of our first chance to get um, a wider set of opinions and operator skills working through kind of the key feature of Minotaur. Um, I think that I've learned a lot just in the, the sequence of events and it's different one thing to do it yourself and actually they sometimes they tell you that you know teaching someone how to do something you're able to learn more about it yourself so I think I've learned a little bit you know standing next to a, a customer maybe I'm talking to them through the window of the machine so I think we've definitely learn some things there. I think we probably identified a few things that we want to go back and work on, do some homework and you know can we improve this particular aspect? Can we make it easier to do this? And that's part of the development process is trying to uh, make your first attempt. You learn something and then you go back and refine and improve it again.